the unseen Ralph McQuarrie is still the basis for a lot of the work in the Clone Wars. When you're doing something like the Clone Wars, whatever we do, we always uh, use the library of information and the drawings and the from the archives to say we want things to be consistent. If this is what Tatooine looks like, uh, Ralph has lots of drawings of Tatooine and, and various cities and things that uh, we need. Some of them we haven't used before. So we're still using Ralph's designs even though uh, we're way into animation and other things now. I mean, as soon as you're making Star Wars, you know, like I'm tasked with, I think there's this attitude some people would say, well, well, you're making your version of this, and that's never been my goal. You know, Star Wars is George Lucas's idea, first and foremost, and, and I try to tell these stories the way that he's taught me, but then beyond that, when it comes to the visual aesthetic of it, I mean, much as we want to do new things and develop new looks and new creatures, vehicles, places, you have to represent, I think, and appreciate the fundamental groundwork for that universe, which is everything that Ralph did. And any chance we get to give him a nod in what we do, we're gonna take it and we're gonna do it. People may not realize the huge amount of work that Ralph actually did that never went beyond the sort of rough conceptual phase. Um, so we've looked at everything from vehicles to armor, lots of different types of you know helmets, um, droid designs, there are creatures that didn't get beyond the drawing board because it was just not something that was practical at the time. Um, anything and everything, you know, um, costumes, you name it. I mean, regardless of what it is we need to design, it's pretty much a safe bet that there is some killer Ralph stuff in a folder somewhere that no one's ever seen that we can use. There's a lot of unused designs that Ralph did for the first three movies, and um, they're, they're brilliant. And we wish they were used today, um, which is what we're doing now. In fact, there was a, recently I, I advised Dave on using one of Ralph's old Boba Fett designs for another character. It was the all white Boba Fett that looked like a lot more like a samurai, even had the little horns in the front and things like that. And uh, we haven't used it yet, but I hope at some point we do. But I'm always trying to advise Dave to use more of this and some of that of Ralph's work all the time. You know, when, when I sit down with George Lucas, it's, I mean, I guess it's funny, but when I sit down with him, the very first day that we do story on any new season of Clone Wars, George and I will go over 22 brand new episodes and I'll sit there and I'll have all the art of books of the original movies and I'll have the illustrated Star Wars universe and we'll be talking, I'm like, you mean like this? And he's like, yeah, well, let's use that. Or he'll, George will even refer to something. He's like, we had something that was, well, we had, you know, these flying whales. And I'm like, yeah, use them in Attack of the Clones. But you mean these things that used to be over here in Alderaan? He's like, yeah, that's the one. We need those things again. And, and he remembers it all. You know, George remembered, because that was, he was creating the universe at that time with Ralph being the illustrator guide to it. Ralph's work definitely has a look to it that translates very well um, into Clone Wars. I think a lot of times we would go back and, and look at sort of the way he would handle a surface. And I, I, think, I know some of the surface artists look at his work for some of the painterly quality that it has. Um, it, always, it always reads as painterly, but at the same time it's used to an effect and uh, compositionally in a way that is very clear, concise, but also very, very real. It all starts in my lighting guide with Ralph McQuarrie images. I'll always go back to them. We have high-res scans of them, although they could be higher, um, of, of all Ralph McQuarrie's work, everything that is connected to the Star Wars universe. And I'll use those all the time for the overall setting of a scene. But I always go through the Ralph data bank first. And I go back to that illustrated Star Wars universe and I say, is there something that I haven't seen that I wanted to see? You know, and, and that square on Coruscant, that kind of mall-like area with the strange conical-shaped buildings, I, I was loved that. I thought, that's awesome, <laughs> you know? Where's that? I want to see that in Star Wars. And so I had a chance to put it in, and, you know, what's great about it is that I have the paintings he did, 
and I can just hold everybody to it. And I'll be like, am I getting that right? I'm like, look at the painting. It's right there, that's what I want. Actually, my, my first assignment coming on to um, work on Clone Wars was to do the lighting concepts for the episode that takes place on Ordo Plutonia, which is um, sort of inspired by Ralph's original designs for Hoth. And um, that was pretty exciting because we went back and looked at all of that early, you know, ice planet stuff. And um, just, I mean, that alone is just a huge inspiration because he has this remarkable ability to take uh, perspective and surfaces and treat them with, um, so that everything has a sort of grain and a directionality to it. Um, and that was something that I tried to, as best I could, preserve um, when we did the designs for the show. I think a lot of it's due to the fact that our characters and our sets are painted very similar to the style of Ralph McCoy. Long strokes, smaller strokes in the detail area, but primarily just paint strokes. And there's no other show on television that does that. The stuff that I know that he saw was things like the assault on Teth. Um, and we did use some of the earlier Jabba the Hutt palace designs for Teth as well. Um, and specifically the sort of glyphs. Um, there was these sort of very large outdoor lanterns that he designed that didn't make it into the, the movies. Um, so yeah, we, we had certain pieces of Ralph artwork that he did recognize. And um, it was, you know, he was sort of playful about it. He, he pointed them out and he's like, uh -huh, uh, yeah, you know, he knew exactly where they had come from. Um, but he was very appreciative of it, of, of it. You know, he enjoyed seeing that stuff. It was, it was something that blows you away when he's here watching work you did. And that's always a litmus test, right? You get some work in front of the man, and then you're like, oh, wait a minute, is this any good? I hope this is good, I hope you... Because, you know, if he's like, that's okay, you're just kind of like, oh, okay, we'll try harder, you know? But he was very gracious, and I think kind to everybody that, that saw it with him. We are pretty fortunate with that group. And, uh, you know, Russell created this artwork that was a kind of a similarity of one of his pieces and with but with our characters and we gave that to him I mean it's just it's just appropriate it's what you do because like I said none of us have jobs unless he does that work before us and so I had to it's to me it was just something I, I had to do I had to do paintings uh, that reflected what he did in the past with Star Wars with what we're doing now with Clone Wars and it was just obvious that that was something that had to show the lineage, the, the generation, uh, the new generation, where this work had come from. And I hope people can see, I tried my best to, to mirror what, what Ralph did and then bring that to a new generation of people, uh, you know, so. He hired me to be a concept artist on episode one. Wow, <laughs> that was amazing. That's a call I had been waiting all my life. 